Even though it came out last July, Samsung's Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra is still a massive 14.6 inch beautiful OLED tablet. And now that Apple finally has an OLED tablet of its own, I decided that we should put the new 13 inch M4 iPad Pro up against the Tab S9 Ultra to see which one I'd prefer or which one I think is the better purchase. And spoiler, I'm going to tell you all of that right now, but I do hope maybe in exchange you watch a little bit more of this video to figure out why and how I came to the conclusions for each of these tablets. So I prefer the M4 iPad Pro, but that's simply an ecosystem thing and also the Magic Keyboard, the newly redesigned one with the new trackpad, is infinitely better than what Samsung has to offer with its first party keyboard. But which one I'd actually buy if I was platform agnostic and trying to make the smarter purchase, it has to be the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra. Now with all of that said, let's go through some of the things worth highlighting about each tablet. And during the course of this video, if you have any thoughts, of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. So let's start with the hardware for each because honestly, I don't think you're gonna be mad with either one that you get. They both have larger displays. Samsung does have that 14.6 inch display compared to the iPad's 13 inch display, but they are both beautiful OLED displays. And I do like the 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the S9 Ultra a little more than what you get with the four by three on the iPad. There's a lot less letterboxing going on when you're watching content, which is what I do a lot on the iPad or on the S9 Ultra. It's a lot of consuming content and then some admin and writing scripts. Now the S9 Ultra can get super bright and vivid and you have adjustments in settings for color, but the HDR can get a bit too bright at times. It can wash things out a little bit and it loses some of that contrast. Both tablets are capable of getting very bright uh, from a peak brightness point of view. I think Samsung has 1,750 nits uh, compared to the iPad 1600, but from a day-to-day -day perspective, I don't think either one looks drastically brighter than the other. I think I like the iPads a little bit. It's better at handling reflections, even uh, sunlight when outdoors compared to the Tab S9 Ultra. And that's not even mentioning that there's a special nano texture version, which I just got recently on the smaller 11 inch iPad Pro. And that does an even better job of blocking out reflections, overhead lights. Obviously, if you're outside, there's way less reflections going on on that iPad compared to even the M4 iPad Pro without the nano texture. And so of course, obviously it's gonna be better than the S9 Ultra here. Uh, there's two cameras on the back. Uh, Apple removed the ultra wide sensor. There used to be two cameras. I don't use cameras on a tablet all that often, but if you need an ultra wide sensor, then I guess it's really simple. You go with the Tab S9 Ultra because it has both of those cameras. Both tablets also have magnetic charging spots for the stylus, but I do like the implementation of the S9 Ultra a little bit more, uh, especially with the keyboard case. Uh, it gets hidden, it's kind of like on the back, it's got a little spot for it, and then the case just drapes over top nicely. It keeps it protected, it doesn't fall out in my bag. With the iPad Pro, you dock it on the top, and uh, if you're using any of Apple's first party cases, there's really nothing that keeps it in place. So oftentimes I find it just kind of in the bottom of my book bag, which is a little annoying and it can easily fall off. Now with the S9 Ultra, you can in fact put your uh, stylus or the S Pen on top as well. It's not gonna charge or do anything, but it at least magnetically docks to it if you want that easy access. But I do like putting it in the back there so that it doesn't fall off and I don't lose it. Both have a USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port on the bottom, which is nice. Now, both tablets have one USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port, which is always nice. But if you couple each tablet with the case, which I'm gonna say a lot because that's how I use my larger tablets like this. I use a keyboard case and I always try to go first party. That on the iPad Pro actually has an extra USB-C port for charging, which is helpful. And you don't get that on the S9 Ultra. Both tablets offer quad speakers. I think the S9 Ultra gets louder, uh, but I think the sound is a lot more full on the iPad Pro. You get a little more mids and low end to provide that depth and clarity. Uh, and that was mostly when I tested it for music. It shines a little bit better there, but for movies and TV shows and YouTube videos, I think it's a toss up. Personally, if you're watching anywhere, I would just put on headphones, especially if you're out in public, but I watch content seriously on these tablets a lot and I always put on some headphones. And so I think you'll be fine either way you go. Now, each tablet is incredibly thin, and the iPad Pro has gotten even thinner than what it already was, and it's just narrowly beating the S9 Ultra, which was already thin to begin with. 
I personally don't care about the thickness of a tablet. I would want battery life and just, you know, these ones are so big already that I'm really not carrying it around or using it like uh, a traditional tablet in my hands a whole lot. It's always docked on the keyboard, which is why you're going to hear me talk about the keyboard a lot. Uh, but if you are using that in a traditional manner, you'll be happy to know that they're both pretty light and um, thin, so it should be a little bit more helpful. But again, 99% of the time, I am docking it to that keyboard case. Now, speaking of keyboard cover or keyboard case, that is a huge part of this. As I mentioned before, keyboard case docked in landscape is pretty important on how I use these larger tablets. And I have to say that the trackpad on the S9 Ultra keyboard cover is so bad that it really makes it hard for me to use sometimes. Now I know, again, there are third party options for each product, but for me, I like to use those first party keyboards, especially when I'm testing it out. It, again, it just works better with the actual product. It's integrated better. And so I personally just cannot stand the trackpad on the Samsung keyboard cover. Now the keyboard is excellent. It feels great to type on. It's got great key travel. It's nice and spacious. There's plenty of extra, you know, function buttons that you can use to integrate with the tablet. And I like those things. And that's why I get those first party key. But it's just the track is so bad. Uh, I often find myself just skipping over uh, the icons that I want to press or the part of, you know, it's like it lacks precision. And there's even a, a setting that you can turn on for more precision. And I feel like that makes it worse. It's funny, I actually used to knock the disappearing cursor on iPad OS when going through the apps. But I now understand why that app snapping and the way it works uh, and the way you switch between app selections is done like this on iOS. It's just a better experience. It's got more precision. It doesn't, it's hard to explain, but trust me, it's really frustrating. And maybe it's just a software thing and it can be updated in the future, but it hasn't yet and it's been a year, so I don't know. Now, the keyboard detaches with the case still on the Samsung tablet, and I love that. Uh, this is something that Apple doesn't really do with the Pro lineup. You kind of get that with the uh, regular iPad, the entry-level model, but you don't really get that kickstand case option uh, from a first-party perspective. So I don't know why, but I do like that. Uh, however, the new Magic Keyboard on the iPad Pro is just so well-designed and it fixed everything that I did not like on the previous generation. And so I really, really like that. And it adds a lot to the overall experience. Now, Stylus, S Pen versus Apple Pencil Pro. The Apple Pencil Pro is a little longer and thicker. I do like the feeling more of the Apple Pencil Pro, just a little bit. Um, there's a lot more baked in functionality. However, with the S Pen, you get way more features. It's nice to see the floating menu. It's nice to see that your stylus is always around. You get notifications if you leave it behind. Things like that are always nice. Uh, the Apple Pencil Pro does have Find My and all of that uh, built in as well. But I just, I feel like there's way more things you can do with the S9. And both are really good to draw uh, with, with the S Pen versus the Apple Pencil Pro. And they're both really good at writing. They have basically no latency. So I really don't have a whole lot to say about each one. I don't use a stylus that much, but I feel like you'll probably want to use the S Pen more. There's a button that you can use on it. There's just more things that you can do. And knowing Android, there's probably way more customizations. But I don't think you'll go wrong either way. The one thing I do want to point out is if you buy a Tab S9 Ultra, you get the S Pen included in the box. The Apple Pencil Pro is a $129 upcharge. So that's a pretty easy decision there if you're somebody who's going to be using a stylus with these tablets a lot. All right, the elephant in the room is Android versus iOS. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I just feel like it's beating a dead horse. It's still going to be a preference or ecosystem thing. If you have an Android phone, you should probably get an Android tablet, especially if you already have a Samsung phone. It really works well together. The ecosystem is a real thing. Apple is you know, for better or worse, known for keeping people locked in their garden and it works really well and it's hard to get out. And so that's kind of where I'm at. App ecosystem for iOS and the design functionality of these apps to me just looks and feels a lot better than Android. And I think a lot of people on Android also with tablets do agree. Just Android for tablet is not well optimized. I know Google's working on that and other OEMs are working on better implementations and things, but uh, it's just not always there. And so the iPad does win in that regard for me. But again, it's going to be a preference thing. Now, Samsung's OS, or at least its skin for Android, does offer way better implementation of that pro style work, you know, setting and workflow uh, with window management specifically when you're multitasking and there's Dex. You still get that desktop-like experience and almost transforms it into a laptop, which is nice. And on the iPad, you get Stage Manager, which is 
not at all close to what Samsung can offer, in my opinion. It's a start, but it's still not as good. And so Samsung kind of wins in that aspect. Now, some quick points to touch on to wrap up this whole video. Uh, performance is great on both tablets. I think technically the M4 iPad Pro does deliver a lot more performance in benchmarks, but we're talking real daily use here. And what I use these tablets for, and if you're like me, uh, again, I use them for a lot of admin work, emails, browsing the web, uh, listening to music, watching content, especially while traveling. And so honestly, each tablet I think can handle everything that I've just talked about flawlessly. You could do a lot more on these tablets. Uh, there are, you know, graphic designers, video editors, whatever the case may be, and you can do it on both. I just don't. And so for me, I really like the big display, the really nice OLED display, the performance capabilities, if I ever were to need it. Uh, but mostly I'm just using it for a travel computer, basically. Um, it's basically going to be a software thing, really, and it's, you know, Android versus iOS or iPadOS, which we just talked about, and I feel like uh, the optimization is just not there on Android quite yet. Battery life is also pretty similar. They're both rated for 9 to 10 hours of use, depending on the task, but I've noticed that standby on the Tab S9 Ultra is a lot better than the M4 iPad Pro. I feel like Phantom Drain is a real thing that's happening on that compared to the S9 Ultra. Now, storage is also a big thing. You can get 256 to a terabyte on the S9 Ultra, and you can go up to two terabytes on the M4 iPad Pro. However, there is still a micro SD card slot. So you can get the cheapest 256 gig model and put a one terabyte card in there for a fraction of the cost as you would with getting a one or two terabyte M4 iPad Pro. So my overall thoughts, I think if we're looking at hardware and just going one for one there and what you get for the price, it's pretty hard to argue that the winner here would be the Tab S9 Ultra. You can find it for a lot cheaper and you get the S Pen included in the box and it features a slightly larger OLED display and it's really nicely made. It's just a solid high-end tablet. And again, so is the M4 iPad Pro, but it's just gonna be a lot more money. And so, uh, you know, really it's gonna start to be an ecosystem software thing. And so that's when it's gonna be a little bit of a harder decision. But I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think? Which one would you get uh, if you were platform agnostic or if you are specifically tied to a platform? Maybe you're going for the other one. Let me know in those comments down below. This has been Dan with Macrumors. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.